World Oil Transit Choke Points by Joe Kiefner, Maggie Ross, and Michael Giles. Important concepts we'll be covering in today's presentation. What is a transit choke point? Why are transit choke points important? What are some of the important World Oil Transit Choke Points? Where are these choke points located? What are some characteristics of these choke points? And what makes these choke points important to the world's oil supply? Choke points. A choke point, commonly known as a strait, is defined by the Merriam-Webster Dictionary as a narrow passage of water connecting two seas or large areas of water. Choke points are important because world oil transit is one of the key factors determining the price per barrel of oil. With over half of the world's oil supply moving over maritime routes, oil choke points are an important topic when it comes to global energy security and the price of oil. Choke points of oil importance that we'll be covering in today's slide are the Strait of Hormuz, the Strait of Malacca, which is not shown in this graph, the Suez Canal and Sumed Pipeline, the Bab el Mandeb, the Panama Canal, the Turkish Straits, and the Danish Straits. The years we'll be paying close attention to are 2010 and 2011. Located between the Middle Eastern countries of Oman and Iran, the Strait of Hormuz connects the Persian Gulf to the Arabian Sea in the Gulf of Oman. Five of the world's top oil producing countries rely on the Strait of Hormuz for exporting the majority of their oil. These countries include Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, Iran, Iraq, and the United Arab Emirates. In 2011, this passageway played a vital role in the world's oil supply, with over 17 million barrels per day shipping through. That's roughly 35% of sea traded oil and nearly 20% of oil traded worldwide. 85% of these crude oil exports headed for Asian markets in the year 2011, with Japan, India, South Korea, and China being the largest Asian importers. According to the New York Times, if Iran were to make good on their threats to blockade the strait at its narrowest point, which has a width of 22 miles, the world oil market would see major repercussions. Those threats are believed to be well within Iran's military capabilities. Analysts, analysts believe this could potentially increase the price per barrel of oil by well over 50%. A blockade of the strait would not only affect the world's oil economy, but would devastatingly cripple Asia's energy needs. The U.S. Energy Information Administration states that there are several alternative ways to move oil around the Strait of Hormuz, should the Iranians decide to blockade the strait. Iraq's Kirkuk Sayan pipeline boasts the potential to transport around 1.5 million barrels per day from the Iraqi oil fields north to the Mediterranean Sea through Turkey, though in recent years the average oil flow was only around 0.4 million barrels per day. Saudi Arabia's 745 mile long Petra line runs across the entire width of Saudi Arabia from the Persian Gulf westward to ports on the Red Sea and has the potential to carry around 5 million barrels per day. The UAE's Abu Dhabi Crude Oil Pipeline, or the ADCOP, has the potential to take over half the country's crude oil exports, over 1.5 million barrels per day, from their country's oil fields to the port of Bujaira on the Gulf of Oman. Though these pipelines offer a great way to bypass the Strait of Hormuz, even at full operational capacity, they would only account for 8 million of the 17 million barrel per day shipment through the strait and therefore couldn't fully circumvent a potential crisis in the Strait of Hormuz at this time. At approximately 500 miles long, the Malacca Strait is the longest strait in the world that is used for international navigation and trading. It forms the main seaway connecting the Indian Ocean with the China Sea and provides the shortest route for tanker trading between the Middle East Asian countries. The greatest part of the waterway runs through the terrestrial waters of Indonesia, Malaysia, and Thailand, with an estimate of 60,000 to 85,000 ships passing through its waters in one year. The narrowest part of the strait is only 1.7 miles wide, creating a bottleneck effect with the potential for collisions and large traffic buildups. Since the waterway is so narrow, many large tankers cannot navigate through its waters. There is approximately 15.2 million barrels a day of oil transported through the strait from the Middle East towards China, Japan, South Korea, Indonesia, and the Pacific Rim. Approximately 35% of all its oil transports in the world travel through the Strait of Malacca. Crude oil makes up about 90% of the transported materials, with the rest being other petroleum products. An issue faced by shipping in the strait is the fact that it is only 1.7 miles wide. This creates a high potential for tanker collisions, therefore oil spills are a huge threat. 
Another issue that faces tankers as they travel through the Straits is the thought of piracy, theft, and hijacking. Although there has been a large increase in the security of the Straits since July of 2005, it is still an issue that is being faced on a daily basis. The creation of an oil and gas pipeline to bypass the Strait of Malacca will begin will be implemented in May of 2013. China will be linked directly to the Bay of Bengal in the Indian Ocean by a gas pipeline running from Myanmar's port to China's Yunnan province. This pipeline is called the Myanmar China Oil and Gas Pipeline. This will mark the completion of the first in a number of projects aimed to bypass the Malacca Strait as an energy transporting system from China and the surrounding areas. The pipeline will be able to transport about 440,000 barrels of oil and gas per day. There has always been an interest in connecting the Red Sea and the Mediterranean Sea uh, by a man made waterway. In 1859, a French diplomat slash engineer by the name of Monsieur de la Seps started excavation of, a, of the modern day canal, which was completed in 1869. Later, the Arab Petroleum Pipeline Company was formed as a joint venture between the Middle e many Middle Eastern countries to build a pipeline that would bypass the canal by going over land through Egypt. It was completed in 1977 and has never stopped producing crude. In 2011, the Suez Canal and Sumed Pipeline uh, combined for approximate 3.8 million barrels per day transported. Because of the limited depth of the waterway, some of the larger tankers cannot pass through fully loaded. If the tanker is in fact too heavy, then it has the option to use the process of layering by offloading excess crude at the end second terminal of the Sumed pipeline near the mouth of the Suez, where it will be piped all the way to the city carrier uh, terminal near Alexandria. The ship, now lighter and with less mass merge, can start its trip up the Suez Canal. Once the ship makes it to the end of the Suez, it takes a quick trip, trip over to Alexandria, onloads the same amount of crew that it offloaded at the other terminal, and makes its way to the final destination at ports all across Europe and North America. Ever since the global economic recession that happened in late 2008, crude shipments have seen a decrease in overall shipping through the Suez Canal and Sumed Pipeline, and the rest of the world for that matter. Interestingly, though, the only petroleum product that has not seen a downfall has been liquefied natural gas, or LNG. In fact, LNG is the only petroleum product to have seen a large increase in shipping in that time period. As I have already discussed, both the Suez Canal and Sumed pipeline are, are crucial to the transportation of Persian Gulf crude and other petroleum products to Europe and North American markets. Both, but we can't forget that both the canal and pipe run, pipeline run through Egypt, and Egypt is has been having a few social changes of its own, chiefly the ousting of longtime president slash dictator, uh, President Mubarak. This has some of the world energy markets concerned. Foremost among those concerns is whether the government will restrict or completely close the Suez slash Sumed pipeline. Either of the two would have far-reaching effects on the global energy market. The Bab el-Mandeb Strait is located at the south end of the Arabian Peninsula between the countries of Yemen, Djibouti, and Eritrea. The Bab el-Mandeb connects the Gulf of Aden to the Red Sea. The strait became important, an important part of the world transit after the completion of the Suez Canal and the Sumed Pipeline. Though fluctuating years passed, in 2011, 3.4 million barrels per day shipped through the strait. The increasing amounts of piracy and terrorism in the narrow strait is a growing concern in the Bab el-Mandeb. In 2002, a group of Al-Qaeda terrorists took a boat fully laden with explosives and rammed it into a French supertanker. The tanker was badly damaged, 12 of the crew were hospitalized, and one of them did not make it off the ship. This kind of terrorist activity has become an increasing concern in the past few years in the Bab el-Mandeb and other waterways of the world. The Panama Canal is a shipping route that connects the Pacific Ocean with the Caribbean Sea and Atlantic Ocean. The canal is 50 miles long and at its narrowest point is only 110 feet wide. Although the Panama Canal is not a large oil and gas transporting route, approximately 755,000 barrels of oil per day were transported through the canal in 2011. The reason that the Panama Canal's relevance in the oil and gas world trade market has diminished so much over time is because the tankers used to ship petroleum products are too large to fit through the canal. 
In order to allow for larger ships to travel through the Panama Canal, the Panama Canal authorities have proposed a plan of action to widen the shipping lane. This proposal is to be completed by the end of 2014. The expansion will add a third lane of traffic that will allow wider cargo loads and new locks that will be 150 feet wide as well as deeper that will allow for larger modern ships to pass. This expansion is expected to increase transit volume. The Trans-Panama Pipeline was built in 1982 with the original purpose being to allow large crude oil shipments from Alaska's North Slope to refineries in the Caribbean and U.S. Gulf Coast. Since it, its completion in 1982, the 600,000 barrel per day tr Trans-Panama Pipeline has had many different requests and proposals to transport oil and gas more effectively than the canal. The Turkish Straits are composed of two waterways. The first is called the Bosporus, which is 17 miles long and connects the Black Sea with the Sea of Marmara. The second waterway is called the Dardanelles, which is 40 miles long and connects the Sea of Marmara to the Aegean and Mediterranean Seas. Both waterways are used to supply Western and Southern Europe with oil from the Caspian Sea area. Approximately 2.9 million barrels of oil per day flowed through the Turkish Straits in 2010. Almost all of that was crude oil. This number is so low because of the dangers of tankers traveling through the Straits. An alternative to shipping through the dangerous Turkish Straits is the construction of the Caspian Pipeline. In 2011, the Chevron launched its $5.4 billion project to double the capacity of the Caspian Pipeline oil route to 1.34 million barrels per day by 2015. The Danish Straits, located near the European countries of Denmark and Sweden, connect the Baltic Sea and the countries of the European coastal northeast, Latvia, Poland, Estonia, Finland, and Russia, to the North Sea and the rest of the world. According to the US EIA, approximately 3.3 million barrels per day shipped through the Danish Straits in the year 2010. Over one-third of these transported products were refined products coming from the Scandinavian refineries like Tallinn, Vinspils, and St. Petersburg. The EI speculates to see an increase in oil transportation through the Danish Straits in coming years due to Russia's ships to refining and exporting oil from their Scandinavian ports on the Baltic Sea. Interview. A choke point is a narrow passage of water connecting two seas or two large areas of water. Choke points are very important to world transit of oil. There are seven choke points of extreme importance to the transit of oil. The Strait of Hormuz, the Strait of Malacca, the Suez Canal and Sumed Pipeline, the Babel Mandeb, the Panama Canal, the Turkish Straits, and the Danish Straits.